Hello and welcome to Simulation TV. My name is Sean Gedman and I'm a product support specialist for Autodesk. And today I'd like to go over some ways that we can build and develop a feed system within uh, Simulation Mold Flow. So our description, what we're going to go for is we're going to look at building a feed system within Simulation Mold Flow Insight and just show you some of the methods that are available in doing this as there are a few. Some of the learning objectives that we're going to cover during this presentation is uh, we're going to create runners from imported curves, uh, manually create a feed system, and then we're also going to use what we call the runner wizard um, to simulate or to um, build some feed systems as well. So on to the demo. All right. Now that we have the software up, what we're going to look at is um, first uh, basically building our feed system off of some IGIS um, curves that you can generate from any CAD package. Um, and you can bring these centerline curves into our software and mesh them as beams. And these uh, beam elements are typical for, for building feed systems. Um, and then from there, I'll go on to modeling or some of the manual procedures to finish off the uh, feed system for this model. So the first thing we do is we have our model in, we have it meshed, um, and so what we're going to do is an add, and we're going to go to a runner IGIS that I created in Inventor. And what this is, is it's a simple curve. That's all it is. You're going to sketch a uh, curve and just make sure these lines are connected in your CAD package because if you bring them in and they're not broken, they will mesh, but you will have connectivity issues as well. Um, so that's one thing we'll want to be assured of. So first, next step, we have our curves in here. So what we're going to do, typically what I like to do is assign my properties right to the curves and what we do is we highlight them and go into change properties and we're going to call this one a cold runner. It's telling us three entities have been converted our uh, straight line, the curve, and the other leg of this. So if I unclick that you'll now see that it's green. Each property has um, a different color typically. So cold runners will have a, a green property, hot runners you'll see it will be a red line. Um, if you're doing cooling channels, which we'll cover in another, another segment, they'll be blue in nature or in color. So from this point, the one thing that we really need to be aware of is uh, before we mesh this, is that the mesher will mesh anything that's active on the screen. So we already have our part meshed. We do not want to uh, remesh it, so we're just going to turn that off. You now see that we just have our curves on. So we're going to go into mesh, generate mesh. Um, we can do a preview on this. It might be a little coarse. Um, so do maybe 10. Preview it again. It looks a little better. So we'll go with this one. Um, typically, you're, you're going to be using the global edge length on this uh, particular part. Uh, we're not messing with any of the other settings. We, they're not required. So we'll mesh now. You see, rather quick. It's simple. We now have our part here, or our beam elements now representing our feed system. So the runner is done. Typically, when we use the IGIS import, we just bring the runner system in. Uh, you can go in here and change these properties if you wish, uh, just by highlighting them, right click, and properties. So you can see we have several shapes. So if you wish to make this uh, uh, trapezoidal or circular, that's fine. If you want to go in and uh, make it tapered, non-tapered, you can edit the dimensions here. 
So I'm going to change this to three millimeters. Um, and they all share a property. So if um, I selected just a couple of the elements, but I have this box check, so they should all, all change. If I only wanted to change maybe uh, the, the secondary section of my runner and leave the primary alone, then I could uncheck this if they shared the same property and that would be fine. So now I'll turn my part back on here. And you can see we have the runner system. So at this point, we're just missing, let's say, a sprue and a, and a runner or gate. So um, I'll go on to the sprue next. Uh, you want to make sure that this is properly oriented because your sprue should always go in the Z direction. The, the clamp force predictions are, are done along the XY plane. So if your part's not uh, modeled accurately or oriented properly, then it will still do the clamp force predictions, but it'll, they won't be the ones you're looking for necessarily because um, if this were sideways, it would take the surface area this side of the part, uh, whatever's on the XY plane. So we want to make sure that that's there because uh, it'll still run. You'll just get uh, probably lower clamp force predictions. So this brings us to the next topic of how do we model things manually? Um, so I'll model a sprue here. Typically what we'll do is um, come in and we'll, we'll create curves. So I'll create a curve. Or a line. Right off of our existing uh, runner here. Get some more room, maybe. All right. So some of the things that we're going to look at is your filter. You'll want to filter this to, to probably the, a node, since we have a node on the end of this um, that we can connect it to. And then we'll also want to probably put a property uh, or assign a property of this curve that we're creating. Uh, so when we go to mesh it, it'll just be there. So in this case, I hit the browse button to the right and I'm going to go new and we'll do a cold sprue. So we'll make it tapered by end dimensions and then we'll do start diameter and end diameter. So you just want to be conscious of this because start diameter is where you pick first and then the second place or the point that's generated is going to be your end diameter. So, um, this will be three and maybe four and maybe two. Now we have our property set. We can pick our point and uh, I go relative typically if you're building it. If you know a coordinate system, by all means, enter it in there or go absolute. But I'm just going to go in, in the positive Z, let's say 40 millimeters. Hit apply or enter. And you can see our curves there now. Now, as I mentioned before, you want to watch when you're meshing this just ensure that what you don't want to mesh is not displayed on the screen. So at this point, I'm just going to highlight this, create a new layer, assign it to my new layer, and then we'll hide all others. Mesh, generate mesh, do a preview on it, looks pretty good, so we'll go with that. And there we are. So at this point, uh, uh, we've seen how we can manually model something, how we can bring in I just curves. I'm not going to model the gate on this particular part. We'll just move right on to the mesh repair wizard. But you would, you would you do it in a similar manner as what we did for the sprue. You would just create your curve, assign a cold gate property, or, or whatever, hot gate if you're dealing with a hot feed system and uh, then mesh from there.
same exact procedure. So on that note, we'll go on to the wizard, the final topic here, and how we can use the mesh repair wizard to, to do a feed system um, on our part here. So for this, I have the part imported, it's meshed. Um, I actually have two of them here. And uh, what makes it different from this one, the, the wizard compared to doing it manually or with the IGIS curves, is that the wizard requires that you have these injection cones on the part first because it, it needs a way to know where your injection location is going to be so it can construct this feed system. Um, and the rest will be covered in the uh, wizard dialogue, all the sizes and, and whether it's hot run or cold runner. Um, but again, if we don't like what we've modeled or what happened here with the wizard, we can always change it. It's, it's very easy. So uh, the mesh repair wizard is going to be, or I'm sorry, the runner wizard is going to be in the modeling tools, geometry tools, and you'll see runner system right here. This is going to bring up a, uh, a dialog box for us with quite a few questions. So if we take our time and we read through them, we won't have any problems. If uh, you have any questions about any of these, there is a what's this button. So you can either research it in the help or click this button and then query on whatever you had a question on and it will um, outline or give you an explanation of what that specific feature is going to do for you. So for this particular model, I want to do it at the center of the mold. So clicking that button is going to pick the center coordinate um, for our sprue between uh, the two components. And then uh, parting plane, we can do top of the part. We'll go with that. You do bottom or the gate plane, which would, you know, if you're doing a tab gate, you do gate plane. Um, if you're doing some type of tunnel gate like we're going to do, I pick the top of the part. And if you want a hot runner system, you would click here and it would activate additional options for you. So now we go into our actual sizes. Um, first thing is going to be the sprue. It's asking for the orifice diameter. That's going to be um, the injection point or where your barrel is going to be injecting. So we'll just say, uh, we'll make that two maybe. And we're going to make the sprue 40 millimeters. You could put, uh, adjust your angle. I'll leave it at three degrees. That's fine for me. Uh, runner diameter, we'll go with three. And next, it's going to ask you for some, some gate questions here. Now, um, what I'm going to do is a tunnel gate. I'm going to make the orifice diameter, of course, in this case, is going to be where the gate contacts the part. So I'm going to make that, let's just say, one millimeter. Um, in this case, we'll specify it uh, by angle. Include an angle is 15. And then we hit Finish. And you can see we have our feed system, it's there. We have our sprue, we have our, um, our runner system, we have our gates, and it moved the injection cone from uh, the part up to the top of the sprue where we'd expect it to be or where we would place it if we used one of the other two modeling methods. So um, that gets us to the wizard and what we can do from here. Uh, with the other two methods as well, as I mentioned, it's really easy to change. What you can do is highlight some of these elements, right click, change property type, and I can change it to, let's say I wanted to do a hot sprue. Oh. You can do a hot sprue, and those are all converted. It's there, it's done. Um, if I wanted to come in here and change the, the size of this, I could also come in, uh, right click, properties, 
and then I could change it if I wanted to go to a straight, straight sprue instead of a tapered. I wanted to adjust any of the dimensions of this sprue. I could do that at this point, uh, set up any of the properties. That would be fine here as well. Um, so that's, that's how simple it is to modify them after you're done. Um, hopefully you've learned something from this exercise. And if you need any further assistance, uh, we can look in the help. It's always a great resource and use some of those help tools or what's this tools that I did show you during the presentation. That's all I have for this presentation. Have a great day.